Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's day is the 18th of December, 2020. We're getting really, really close to getting the fuck out of 2020. The time is 3.10 p.m. Pacific time. What's up, virgins? You ready to cover some news? Where should we start? <laughs> Where should we start? <sighs> so first off, this shouldn't be the last news of the year, but it might be the last news of the year because New Year's Day is on a Friday. So that would technically be the first news of the next year. So this might be the last one. It might not. We won't celebrate or anything. Uh, hi, YouTube pitch. Ah, Draven's wrong again. All right. All right. All right. Let's, 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 we'll, we'll settle this. Okay. Listen, YouTube. Okay. We had this discussion before, before I started the news and by and large, People agree with me. I shouldn't do that, actually, because I know the comments will rebel. All right, listen. I'll just put it out there, okay? <laughs> he said wrong already. Wrong. <laughs> Pitch Black or Chronicles of Riddick? Which one is better? Pitch Black or Chronicles of Riddick? Do not talk about Pitch Black 3 or whatever the hell it was called. Okay? More Pitch Black. Pitch Blacker. Okay? No. Pitch Black or Chronicles Ready. Not you got Pitch Perfect. Get the fuck out. <laughs> just, you fucking ru ruin a movie by swapping out one word. <laughs> Unlikely sequels. Pitch Black. Pitch Perfect. Pitch. Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right. So. So yes, that's that's for the comments. Please, please let us know. Please let us know. And you guys will see what they say. Okay? We'll see what they say. All right. So, I have news. My recent job at Riot has been to help develop and uh, develop the League universe, which we're going to need because it is time my new job is to kick off a big, some might say massive, game that many of you and many rioters have been asking us to create. P.S. We are hiring. Top comment asks, tell me now, is it an MMO? Will I be able to pick my wife whose clothes and hairstyle? And he says, it is an MMO. Greg Street probably knows <laughs> what an MMO is. And he's telling us that it is an MMO. Probably not bullshitting us. Probably not kind of an MMO. Probably not some lobby-based shit. Okay? It's probably an MMO. With Ghost Crawler at the helm. Now, I understand. That's probably going to bring bring a little bit of mixed feelings for some folks. Some people appreciate the work that GC did. While he was working at Blizzard uh, on World of Warcraft, obviously. Uh, and some people celebrated him leaving the company. So, Titan confirmed. Here we go again. <laughs> get out the, get out the tinfoil hats. Uh, man. That is uh, all we know. That's all we know. Uh, there's, there's articles and such, but the articles just basically recap. Yeah, that's what he said. And they're hiring. Uh, we know that they have other games. The right, the studio behind League of Legends of Valorant is developing a massive multiplayer online role playing game. Uh, it's an easy pass for me. Don't fuck with ten set shit. Woo! I feel like I heard about this. Is it the one that's cross between MMO and MOBA? There is. Uh, uh, the former Riot devs did announce a game. Maybe this is what you saw. Um, what they're calling a, it's an MMO project, um, but they're calling it a MOCO, which is a massive online cooperative, uh, co-op, co-op. So, <clears throat> so yeah, this is the one maybe you had seen, but they just announced this thing like last week. And so of course, of course, <laughs> right. Had to step up and be like, wait, wait, we have our own two. We're working on it right now. It says at long last. Mark Merrill, the uh, co-founder, said this two years ago, uh, 2018, right? Yeah, July 2018. And he says, should we build an MMO? Yay or nay? 
And that was basically the last we heard of this. So this was a long time, a long time, and already obviously in some kind of production, whether it's storyboarding or whether it's, you know, the whiteboard with all the different sticky notes and shit all over the place and the strings and all over the place, like maybe something like that. Like maybe we don't know to what end development means when, you know, when you start however many years ago. But we definitely know that they were thinking about it then and have been for a long time. Um, <clears throat> Tencent said, build it, get wild out of China. <laughs> is that, is, is, is that what the, is that what we think the, uh, the hypothesis here is that, that they, uh, that Tencent is basically saying to, uh, to make an MMO in order to, uh, to usurp World of Warcraft in China. Could you imagine if that was the case? Can you imagine what would happen to poor Blizzard <laughs> if they lost the Chinese market? Uh, the whiteboard from the house of the game. Uh, heroics won't be nerfed. We are nerfing heroics. Day wow. Day wow jumped the shark. Aww. It, no, that's what I'm saying though. Like there's def there's absolutely uh some conflict with some folks. You know, like some folks appreciate what he did and other folks think that he ruined whatever. And I think it really has has a lot to do with what you did in World of Warcraft, right? Myself, I PvP it a lot. Uh, you know, I, I fishing tournament. You know, <laughs> like, it's like so. Like for me, what he did didn't have any uh, any significant impact. Where I felt like oh, I can't believe he did blank. But if you were a raider, then you absolutely have a strong opinion. Probably either way, because everything that that uh, that GC touched more than likely had an impact on what you guys did as a raider and <clears throat> when you're putting in you know four maybe five nights a week raiding and somebody's decision ends up you know screwing your class or fucking your rotation or changing your strats or whatever i totally understand why uh why you would feel a certain way uh about gc darnell had feelings about you did he <laughs> I guess he didn't uh I guess he didn't crap on your class when you played. No, well, I mean maybe he did, but like I said, you know, PVP, PVE, like there's a huge difference. You know, like when, when PVE is is when, when you PVE like raiding and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, right? But like you you are a uh like you you basically perfect a rotation. You perfect these things. You work hard to perfect like a process. When you PVP PvP is more about improvisation. So when you can't, when something changes and you can't do blank anymore, you just pick something else to do. And it's, it's just, it's be, and for the one situation that comes up when you end up using blank. When you're PvEing, you are like, you, you are a fine tuned machine, both in, you know, your character, you know, uh, 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 build, and then also, you know, of course, how your rotation is and everything. So uh, it was, it was like eight years ago. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> yeah yeah guys get over it uh but i mean he's working on a new game and i feel like he has the experience to put out something that uh at least will probably be relatively successful it is going to be based in runeterra uh which is the league of legends world i think it's runeterra is it runeterra i believe so um so it is going to be based off of that. It's probably going to include some of the characters or classes or makeups or builds or spells or assets or whatever uh, from League of Legends. And that is, I mean, people are excited about that. Uh, the same way that when we we're talking about when there was a tease of StarCraft, not tease, but whenever we thought that we were going to get a StarCraft universe, uh, people were like, fuck yeah, because we wanted to see more of that. There was already so much built there uh, that we wanted to see that developed into a world that you could actually be a part of. Um, maybe it never happened now, but uh, maybe it will. <laughs> like, actually, you know, it's like maybe now is the time that Blizzard does it because Riot is a, ma a major competing company for Blizzard. Uh, they've already, they've already, um, well, they've already obviously uh, failed at uh, taking them in the MOBA market. Uh, we know that <clears throat> numbers wise, Overwatch does better than Valorant. Um, I haven't checked in a while, but I'm fairly certain they're still doing better than Valorant. Uh, and also a tough to compare the two, so bear with me, but. Um, but now with, with an MMO in the works, Blizzard's either going to just sit on their hands. I hope it sucks or they're going to develop something to counter it. 
We'll see. Uh, I remember that uh, SC2 FPS map. Yeah, I remember. I remember the mod, the StarCraft, the World of StarCraft, whatever. I think it was called World of, World of uh, StarCraft mod uh, that somebody made. That was, um, you know, janky, but still, still pretty good. <clears throat> Stadia release. <laughs> Maybe if anyone could ever possibly have a chance of making a WoW killer, it'd probably be Riot. Thank you boner uh yes it could be it's probably riot there's not really a lot of companies that have the um the experience and the money and the manpower to uh to compete with something like world of warcraft there are existing games that are still doing well we saw that last week with daybreak numbers we see that you know eq is eq classic still doing fucking fantastic given how old it is um as well as so many other games underneath the daybreak uh, umbrella like they're still doing fine but they exist in a different realm like final fantasy 14 right they exist in a different literally and also story-wise and all that stuff but still they 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 don't really there's not an over not a huge overlap um like they they can coexist basically is what i'm saying they coexist uh but for there to be a wow killer you know rune terra is we're still dealing with like this medieval fantasy type of uh of uh of setup here is there room for a league of legends mmo and world of warcraft and final fantasy 14 and eq 99 <laughs> is there room for all these games like this is a lot man this is a lot <clears throat> wow killer would be blizzard killing wow there's only one wow killer activation blizzard yeah no next question <laughs> poor everquest no, no top did you see news last week everquest is doing fantastic somehow <laughs> somehow it's doing great bought and sold and left oh yeah well maybe it's still the forgotten child but uh but they're they're actually somehow they're pulling in numbers was it 60 something million dollars a year uh all the games from uh daybreak were pulling in yeah pretty impressive pretty damn impressive um <clears throat> so so that was just our opening story Right? The next story is going to take the rest of the weekend. We'll start off with a small video to give you guys an idea of wow, of uh, of uh, what we're dealing with here. <sighs> Let me just get out of the way here. Seven, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. The city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there, just around the corner. And it keeps you going. City of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. All right, so ah, Cyberpunk 2077 has had a very rough, very rough week. Um, this is going to bring some pretty polarizing uh, opinions because it really truly depends on what you're playing it on. Um, also, if you're playing on PC, what your hardware is and your mileage, like there has never been a game that it, that, that your mileage may vary, like applies more to like, 
from last gen to current to mid gen with PS4 Pro to current gen to PC. There's just so many ways that you can experience this game um, poorly. Now, I've, I've, you'll see that Bailey says, like, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, I too am enjoying it so far. Boy, is it full of fucking bugs. I can't do hardly anything without noticing that something is very off about something in the world or something happens where like I can't throw grenades or I can't uh, I can't access my inventory or I can't do whatever. It's there's so many weird issues that occur while I'm playing, but I still enjoy the game. You can if you if you do have an opportunity to play it, like actually play it, you will see that there's clearly a lot of love, there's a lot of um work and, and just a lot of thought that went into designing the world um but the world you know initially looks like it's wow it's beautiful all this stuff but the more you dig the more you discover that there's a lot of rough edges uh all over the place uh if you're playing on a playstation as a draven says ps4 this because apparently that makes a difference see between said 10 graphical glitches bugs 18 crashes level 20 at the moment see level 20 now imagine <clears throat> you know if you if if you're a PC user and you're like, yeah, I experienced some bugs and all that stuff, right? Yeah, I got some bugs here and there. You know, maybe crash a couple times, whatever. Um, but then slap on top of it, poor frame rate, low res textures, uh, stuff like that. That's what it's like when you're playing on a, uh, a last gen console. Talk about the PS4. Uh, not so much. The PS4 Pro is a dramatic difference between uh, your PS4 Pro and the... Uh, um, as a matter of fact, I have this video here from uh, Digital Foundry that uh, Freycord linked earlier that I want to play so you guys can see that <clears throat> there is a stark difference. Let me go and lower this here. Between the two. Uh, so this is why I would consider PS4 Pro... This is played in slow motion here because I want to show you guys textures and all that stuff. Uh, but if you're a PS4 player or an Xbox uh, One X player, um, then you're going to have you're going to have issues. See, they had a 6 gigabyte updates today. Uh, day one, imagine what the game was like in November. Console us users uh, used uh, used to 30 FPS gameplay. Imagine April when it was supposed to come out originally. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, at this point, I avoid purchasing any new game for at least three to six months after release, sometimes a year. This is definitely one of those games where you can you can look at it and say it's going to be amazing in a year. Like this game has potential to be so fucking incredible in a year. <laughs> it's gonna take some serious time to uh, uh, to make this game what we would expect. And it's not like they're breaking boundaries here. There's some there's some elements that are pretty cool, right? Um, in terms of like even that for me the game is like Watch Dogs, Grand Theft Auto um, all kind of rolled into one It's it's there's so many open world games that have set a pretty high bar Grand Theft Auto 5 was one of them that you, it's kind of hard to come back from that and be like okay well now we have a game that is just open world but it feels worse um, and this is where we get into the discussion about how long has the game been in production uh we don't when, when they say it's been in production for eight years we don't know if it's eight years of solid coding solid bug testing solid all this stuff it could be eight years from like they made a demo and then they started whiteboarding stuff uh as a developer myself i can't excuse how they're releasing things in the industry i think a lot of these issues stems from the agile metho methodology that so many dev shops have have adapted adopted yes sprints <clears throat> basically here's your here are your post-it notes get this done in the next two weeks and you have to get it done in the next two weeks and then you're going to move on to the next thing and if you don't finish your sprint then that's gonna be a mark against you on your on your annual review um yeah i used to i used to work in that field too and i see it i see it we we definitely while we definitely encourage crunch systematically right we needed to get something out and you have to do blank 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 in your two week sprint and if you don't get that done then you're gonna look bad even if it's not necessarily reasonable and we would ask it's like do you think you get this done and you would say yeah i think i get it done and then when you don't get it done it's like well now you're the bad guy right and so yeah agile is a great way to to um to organize your development workflow i don't know if it's if what's better i'm sure there's something better but uh 
but it does it does feel like it lends itself to the um to like systematic crunch <clears throat> it's great if you can stay on top of it top name dropping himself uh i'm glad i'm a plumber uh where nobody ever pushes me to rush my job in <laughs> unreasonable time frames <laughs> listen do you want shit all over your floor or do you want me to fix this okay it's gonna take a minute uh, there is a keyword, minimum viable product, MVP, exactly. That's why I haven't heard that word have phrase in a long time. Uh, yes, MVP, minimum viable product. Minimum viable product is what we're looking at here. Uh, it's great if you can stay on top. Sorry, uh, I, I made a long ass post in Discord talking about it. With the age of DLC has hurt games as a whole. We accept the game to come out unfinished and to be patched up to part after launch. Yep. Compare that to before uh, DLC patching where you had to make a game right for launch, not after it. Um, MVP with a scope creep to hell and back. Uh, if it ain't done, put it back in the oven. It's a great way to build something that is unknown, but another problem is the fact that uh, with Agile, you end up having a lot of tech debt, as, tech debt as well. That's right. Yeah, so we don't know. I mean, we don't know how long they've been really working on it, like dev stuff. We don't know. I don't even know if they're using sprints to like organize their stuff, right? I don't know if this is like a systematic issue with how they do how the... Obviously, it's a managerial issue, right? Like, they didn't manage it correctly. But what what they're using in order to get the work done, that remains to be seen. Um, but the bottom line is, the game just is not up to par. <laughs> like, it fucking feels pretty early access uh, to me. Jesus. They got one giant Trello board. Just a huge Trello board. Oh, my God. Nightmare fuel. Uh, so, just so you know... First off, I want to make sure I mention this too. People are still experiencing um, DMCA hits for videos that they've uploaded to YouTube, and all, and obviously also on Twitch. So this is still on, like on top of everything else, this is still an unresolved issue. Uh, they have they have they've responded. This guy works for CDPR, and he says for this our legal team thinks with a heads up. We have checked on this, and the claim makes absolutely no sense. Our legal team is going to address this, and for now, we recommend to challenge the claim. Sorry, this is not the correct term. Not even so. So they, in terms of this, clearly they know about it. The legal team knows about it. They're working on it, um, but it's still another issue on top of everything else that people are experiencing. And again, like I said, if you're having a great time and it's fine, but you have some bugs, imagine if you had that same number of bugs, but also shit ass frame rate on top of it. Try to drive with low frame rate. Okay, driving is already kind of wonky in uh, in Cyberpunk, which it shouldn't be, but it is. Um, and then try to do it with low frame rate. Uh, recommend challenges. Uh, Danger to suggest challenging and failing counts as a strike against the count. Oh, I'm not sure what you're referring to. This stuff feels like the No Man's Sky release. The difference between this and No Man's Sky is we have Sean Murray uh, just nodding his head yes. And agreeing to all these questions, all these wild questions of things that are going to be in the game. And then he didn't deliver. And over the years, I've uh, I've I've come to realize that you could ask Sean Murray anything. And he would probably respond in the same fashion. <laughs> that's what he do. He would just nod his head. Like, yeah. Like, that's what he does. And ask him anything. And that's what he'll say. And fucking media just like kept that. You mean we can have this? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened. He dug himself into the biggest hole of all time. In this case, the problem was that they showed us footage from uh, PC and next gen consoles. Uh, and. <clears throat> And it was uh, misleading to people who play it on older gen consoles. Now, this is, I feel like we had, I don't have any, 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 uh, uh, any stories or anything. I just thought of this. Uh, reflecting when we made the switch from the PS3 to the PS4, I know we had games that were on both. And I think one of them was uh, or an Xbox, uh, Xbox 360 to Xbox One. Um, I believe we're looking at like uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto V, I actually think it was probably one of those games, but not for that long was probably on both PS3 and PS4. And I'm willing to bet there was probably people who saw, uh, maybe not with GTA specifically, but with, with certain titles that were bridging the gap there, where they were expecting one thing because they saw, you know, console performance, console performance on a next-gen console, which had been PS4 and the Xbox One. Uh, but what they ended up getting was actual <laughs> performance from their 
previous gen consoles and we're at that point now where we're bridging the gap we have you know brand new next gen consoles and we have old gen consoles uh and people are expecting one thing and they're getting another um the division had the same issue we see uh, footage and then it wasn't as detailed mm-hmm uh, Skyrim 360 version of GTA 5 was a lot of things completely cut. Yep. Um, but yeah, that, thank you, Corey, for handling that question, by the way. <clears throat> so, obviously, it's been a rough week for, uh, for CDPR. Uh, they, on one hand, we expect when we see a product of this quality, we expect... Why didn't you delay it? Right? Why didn't you delay it? Um, but on the other hand, they get bombarded with people who say, stop fucking delaying it. And I have some of those here. I didn't curate these. Someone else did. But still, we deserve extra free DLC for the constant lying. Give us something for wasting our time this entire year. This is ridiculous. Just keep the game. This cannot be allowed to become a precedent in the gaming in industry. Uh, deadlines exist for a reason. They are meaningless if we keep moving them despite insurances, uh, assurances from the devs. People make plans around these deadlines. It's only a matter of time before you get sued for missing one. The gamers who bought and paid for the Xbox One X to receive this game need to be compensated for their pain and suffering. <sighs> we loyal fans waited and waited and waited and received nothing. If you purchase this, you deserve compensation. Hands down. Screw consoles and quit pushing back PC release because of them. See? This goes on and on. This goes on and on. Entitlement. So yeah, they should have they should have pushed it back. But it's not like they weren't getting pressured to release it. Not just from obviously their investors who wanted to you know get the get that out before the end of the quarter, uh, but also from people who wanted to just be entitled, <laughs> who felt like they deserved this game. <sighs> uh, they were stuck between a rock and a hard place, basically lose lose. That's right. Everybody lost. Everybody, Leo, it's the the screw consoles. What is correct? Uh, everybody lost in this. CDPR loss. The fans loss. Um, not everybody. Like I said, some people are enjoying the game. That's fine. That's great. It's a different experience on other consoles uh, or other platforms, you say. Uh, here's the thing: if they push it back, push it back, push it back enough. Yeah, that's a tough one. No, that's a tough one. Yeah, it, it's it's like they needed to push it back enough to make the changes that they that they uh, aimed to do. Uh, to release a product that would reflect what we expected them to put out. Entitlement is a ge the, gener the generation. It's, I mean, especially when you talk about Twitter. Oh, man. God. I mean, look at how many likes. This one, you can't see how many likes on this one. But you can see there's definitely four digits there. Okay. This one, 851. This one is we got 166, 15. Eh, this one, 423. Yeah, the entitlement is real. And it's not just cherry-picked comments. Like there's a lot of people that are agreeing with this. They're agreeing with it. We're agreeing with this. Uh, Henry Cavill is probably at home playing cyberpunk. I know. Fucking on a 30, 30, 90. This guy this beautiful man. Fuck him. <sighs> How'd he get one? Damn it. <clears throat> so some days ago, today let's have a look at Overwatch players. Talk about the ones only play Overwatch as opposed to tile games. Uh, go down and they want free surprise mechanic boxes. I think a minor part of the issue is also that devs, publishers... I uh, need to stop saying a release date of any kind until they know it will probably release then. Dude, that is... So, you're talking about, like, an entire shift in business, right? D deadlines do exist for a reason. It's because they tell you that if you don't release by a certain date, we're not going to give you the money for this thing. So, deadlines are huge. If they pushed it... Listen, if they pushed it back too far um they might have lost money on the release not just from people being burnt out on just waiting for the title uh but also they would miss out on christmas they would probably miss out on people who would say you know what i'll just wait for the next gen until i get a ps5 or something and then i'll get the game even though even though you could buy the uh old gen and then put it in a new gen and get the uh the the update to basically bring it up to par so you don't have to, you don't have to buy the game for each platform that doesn't exist in this case um 
Apparently, someone came out and said Stadia was uh, uh, likely the cause for the November-December delay. Ended up being the best performing platform besides PC. Dude, Red War Machine is right. Yeah, I have no personal experience with this, but everything I've read was like, this is, this is Stadia's moment. The, I mean, it's too bad that Google's already forgot about Stadia. Because they could be promoting the shit out of this to everyone. It's like, having problems playing the game? Come on, do that. Like, they could have just plugged it all day. Deadlines exist, but I'm saying stop announcing a release date when the game isn't even in alpha yet. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's part of the deadline, man. You gotta, you gotta have a release date. Um, I've heard it plays good on Stadia. Yes, everything I've heard for Stadia has been that it plays well. Uh, Mark Scarborough says, uh, not stating external deadlines doesn't make sense given the publication, distribution, and marketing models of the industry. It's right. Yeah, it's not just the developer saying, here's the game, go! Like, there's so much coordination with marketing, promotions, and distribution. Just exactly what Mark, Mike, I don't want to repeat your, what exactly you're saying, but still, that's exactly right. The mics are right. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing it on GeForce now, and it hasn't crashed once. Yeah, so Stadia is just an example, right? Uh, there's more than just Stadia that exists in terms of a cloud gaming. Uh, GeForce now might be one. Uh, there's that Shadow one. Top, you play that Shadow something, uh, which is another service that is similar. Uh, and I think Top, didn't you say you were playing it and it was fine? Uh, but now we have a PSA that saves uh, files. Breaking six megabytes uh, will load very slowly and over eight megabytes may, may will corrupt. Oh, Jesus. Large save files, six megabytes. Damn it. Um, they have they, they have to give up before Death Stranding and uh, Cyberpunk crossover. Got, got to give the stockholders something to look out for. Yep, look for. Uh, CDP may have been uh, hit with penalties from the Polish government, for examples, uh, and had the uh, further delayed release. Yeah, use Shadow PC for Cyberpunk. Works great. There you go. Where's on? <laughs> Where's on live? Where's on live? God, they could have just oh, before their time. Before their time. So obviously they're getting a lot of feedback, a lot of negative feedback. Um, you know, there's some positive feedback, sure, but overwhelmingly negative. Uh, so much so that it's actually a subreddit called uh, Low Sodium Cyberpunk. R slash Low Sodium Cyberpunk, uh, meaning. Salt. <laughs> so no, no salt. Basically, it's people who are playing the game and enjoy it, uh, and they want to share stuff about it because the main cyberpunk subreddit is primarily bugs, issues, grievances, all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. Uh, low sodium cyberpunk is where you're gonna go if you're uh, if you're a PC user. Pretty much, pretty much all PC users. Uh, <clears throat> so you get articles that are flying out all over the place. I, obviously, the media is gonna be playing a huge part in this. Okay, and we know this. Like, the game has issues. Does it have as many issues as people claim? It's easy when we're. It's so easy for us to communicate. And to be able to show people what we're talking about. It's like, look at this video I just took. Look at this bug I just found. Um, and some of them are like game breaking. That trailer I played for you guys at the beginning. Like some of that shit is just like, oh my god. Like imagine that happens and you didn't save. And you end up having like, you're dying and flatlining. And you have to go back. Uh, because like 50 cops show up right in front of you. Just spawn. Or a car flies out of the sky and just kills you. Uh, it's easy for us to share some of those things. And compile them and make a trailer that says, look at this game. It's a complete buggy piece of shit. Um, so... In turn, the media is going to jump on it, and they're going to come out with articles like this. They knew it was wrong. They knew it was wrong, and they did it anyways. Uh, and so this was 14th of December. We even have, uh, let me see, trying to request We have articles, yeah, people basically talking about getting refunds. How are you going to refund? If you're trying to request a refund for Cyberpunk 2077, especially after the studio said it would help, uh, please let me know what your experience has been like. DMs are open. If you recall, around the 13th, I think, uh, maybe the 14th, um, they put out uh, it's basically what happens if you try to do a return on like a Sony, Sony platform, PlayStation, PS4, PS5, whatever, uh, they would direct you to the developer. And then when you go to the developer, you're just met with apologies. It's like, we're really sorry. We're, we're planning on doing blank. Uh, we're sorry. It was like apology. That's all you really got was an apology out of it. Nothing else. So. Let me see. There we go. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So then yesterday, we get that Sony is removing Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store uh, and will offer refunds to players who had already bought it. And then shortly after, 
as chat's saying here, shortly after, Microsoft also comes out and says the same thing. Um, they actually put out a statement on their own saying that, uh, let me see, uh, they had an official statement, yellow coming in. Uh, watch out, here comes some yellow. Uh, they had a statement on their own saying the same thing, that they are also, uh, they're supporting PlayStation, again, doing the refunds and all that stuff. <clears throat> I love the only digital purchases of Cyberpunk 27 are getting refunds, but not physical, even though both are the same game. Yeah. My eyes! I know, I know. So, yeah. <laughs> refunds are being uh, issued. They don't encourage it because they want you to know that they are going to they are going to uh, work on the game and they're going to get it, you know, ship shape and I guess ship out a nice bug for the set of bug fixes they had one uh earlier this week i think and then they uh plan on having another one i think this weekend or something or maybe next week um but yeah i mean like iris says it's like you know we're gonna fix honest guys give us a year like it's it's this is hard because it feels a lot like a like an early access title and er we already know how it goes with early access titles like they live in early access forever the issues persist forever <clears throat> So what does this do to whoops to CDPR? Well, first, first, it uh, it tanks the stock. Now, if you're looking at this, it's like well, it doesn't look so bad. Yeah, it doesn't look so pretty flat or whatever. Let's zoom out. Let's do it to like a month. Oh, we see a little bit of a dip here. Okay, around December eighth, December 9th, start to see it kind of creep, 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 creep. Let's expand it out further. Woo! Pretty good drop. Let's go year to date. Pretty good. And then one year, which is basically the whole thing. So while they are up, <laughs> technically up over the year, uh, they are just barely. And we still have a few more days left in the year. So they might they might come in just under. This is bad. This is pretty bad. Uh, they know that they're taking a hit. They know that refunds are coming in. Um, they actually stated we're gonna go over we're gonna go over a transcript that I went through and highlighted a bunch of, of keynotes here. Um, where they are discussing as a matter of fact, let's pull it up right now and go over this. Oh, they're going to release the deal. Actually, no, not that one. I have uh, I have my actual annotated version here. Boop. I said virgin. Oh, God. Uh, I said, <laughs> hope they're not going to release DLCs before they fix it. If so, uh, it should really hit the fan. You imagine? I can't imagine they would do that. Uh, see, Sony is being what? Uh, Sony is being hypocritical, though. They let Fallout 76 get away with this. That's something to note. Fallout 76 did not get pulled from a platform. Um, granted, they only existed on their own, but there's a launcher for PC. So there was no Steam or Epic or anything like that to uh, to pull the rug out from under them. They already existed on PC. Uh, but no one else pulled them. The game was definitely not finished. This this is definitely this is this is why it's such a big deal that Sony did this because this is Sony telling a game developer, a AAA game developer that they're not going to allow this shit to continue. That they are going to take action if you put out a product that does not reflect what you promoted it to be. Um, I wonder, I, I wonder if there's going to be lawsuits that come from this. Um, I am certain there will be. Because Sony made a call that, and I'm sure they're within their legal right to do so. Uh, but they made a call to pull a game a week before Christmas, and they're probably not going to put it up before Christmas. So that is a fuck ton of sales that people are going to miss out on. People, are... imagine you give your 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 kid or you as a kid, you get a gift card for anything, or as an adult, you get a gift card for anything, and you're like, I'm going to get Cyberpunk. I'm going to get Cyberpunk because that's the game I've been waiting for. I got a seventy-five dollar card. However much games cost on the fucking platform, I got a seventy-five dollar card. I'm going to buy cyberpunk and then it's not available. What do you do? We don't know when it's coming back and that money sure is burning a hole in your pocket. So instead I'm just going to buy, uh, buy some of these other games. I'm going to buy like uh, a couple of indie games and maybe another game by night city 2177. <laughs> so then what? I'll just buy it again on my birthday when I get another gift card for, you know, whatever that's, that's pretty that's pretty fucked up financially man cdpr is gonna take like they're just not selling shit now like they're also not gonna sell extra shit on christmas because people are gonna spend that money on whatever they get their hands on nobody's good with money it's gonna be spent <laughs> that could
could have been theirs. That could have been theirs. Now it's not. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see lawsuits come from this. It would be worth it for them to at least try to fight Sony on this. It would absolutely be worth it because the money they're lo they're losing. Um, this is a strong argument against releasing games across different generations of consoles. Honestly, you hinder the entire game to barely be able to play it on previous console. This is yeah, you know, uh, Luda. This is this is what I think PC players have been saying for forever, right? It's like why why do we get the shit end of the stick because it has to work on console also, and the reason why is because console makes up such a significant percentage in. CDPR's case, they actually said in this article, in this transcript here, they said that I think it was uh, 40%. Uh, we'll get to it, but they but they said it was like 40% of people were, 41%, something like that, was console. Uh, and like 58% or something like that was uh, was PC. We'll, we'll get to the numbers here in a second. But let's go ahead and go, let's go, ahead and, uh, go, uh, go through this. Do you think they'd have a better up release of Cyberpunk for the next-gen consoles instead of during a bridge between consoles? Well, no, because there's... Uh, in order to get your adoption rate up, it takes time. So if you release a PS5, that doesn't mean that everyone has a PS5. That means everyone has a PS4. And it takes a long time to get that saturation up to where you can develop exclusively for the PS5. Wasn't Last of Us like one of the last PS3 games or something? I remember it was a big deal. There was there was like the last PS3 game, and that happens with every generation because eventually you get to the point to where it's not it's not financially reasonable in any in any stretch to make a game for a last gen console. We will see that, but this is not that game. So yes, okay, it was that one. Yeah. So yeah, we probably won't see the last PS4 game for three to four years. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, they should make a generation for the release and then go after and then after go to the other generation once it is established uh, port math console console pl console PC equals PC sad PC console equals console rage <laughs> there's a flow chart here so it says after three delays we as management board were too focused on releasing the game we underestimated the scale and complexity of the issues we ignored the signals that that uh, about the need for additional time to refine the game on the base last gen consoles. There's a lot of game here. We talk about sprints. We talk about you know, agile. We talk about different ways of managing your workflow. Uh, there's a lot of game here. And so they're saying that they managed it wrong. We know this. This is that's a no brainer. So the question next question here is, do you think this was a headcount capacity issue or a workflow issue? And I see this a lot. I see this a lot. A lot of folks think just you, you, you sold a million, eight million copies just throw more people at the problem it doesn't work that way it does not work that way and they they address it here it says in terms of delivering the game at a certain point um it's really not about the number of people it's not like throwing in in the last month 200 or so people will actually help so the answer is no this is not related to the fact that we could only have thrown 300 or 500 more people into the fray and things would have happened differently um see too many cooks in the kitchen uh is uh, is a thing programming is uh no easy Nine, nine women can't have one baby in a month. God damn, ditch. Damn. Woo, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> nine women can't have one baby in a month. Wow. So it says, uh, question is, have you seen a flood of refund requests that you have to deal with? Or are most people have already bought the game holding on to it, trusting that you'll make it playable on old gen? And it says, as of today, it's too early to say. We've just begun the process. We sincerely hope that gamers will prefer to wait for updates since they've waited so long for the game. But again, this is our humble hope. It says, if you had hired some outsourcers to do some more extensive testing, could you have less of an issue here? Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Cheers, everyone. And it says, what? One thing that perhaps didn't help us is COVID. Internal testers are able to test the game working from home because we provide them with our own connected machines and so on. But external testers working from external companies were not able to test the game from homes. They have test centers, and if they're not there, they're not able to work. So we've seen a decrease in the number of testers, but I wouldn't point to it as a major source of problems. So they're saying that COVID had an impact, but it wasn't the, the major source of the problems. The major source of the problems is what they mentioned before. Mismanagement. Outsourcing is a nightmare. Working with external devs and testers is almost never worth it. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Having internal QA is amazing. Um, scroll down here. It says, uh, 
It says, it's more about us looking, as I previously stated, at the PC and the next-gen performance rather than current-gen. We definitely did not spend enough time looking at that. And this is the, this, I've seen this quote floating around already, actually, uh, where they said they did not spend enough time looking at how it works, functions, uh, uh, you know, between the different platforms. Uh, so I wouldn't say that we felt any external or internal pressure to launch on the date other than the normal pressure, which is typical for any release. Uh, and it says... <clears throat> As stated, uh, as, as as stated in the statement made public today in the morning, we are planning to get the game in a much better shape than it is now. Of course, uh, and a lot is going to be happening in December, come January and February. You're going to see larger improvements. Uh, you need external testers to see issues on old gen consoles. It's true. It's true. Yeah, and that's what they're saying. They're saying that they didn't spend enough time focusing on the issues that were in the uh, last-gen consoles, uh, and they were focusing more on next-gen, current-gen, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and so that's why... And, and that and that reflects that reflects what actually happened, their actual feedback. Most of the negative feedback, the bulk of it, comes from people who have uh, old-gen consoles, which is the majority of console players right now. You, you, they're lines, they're virtual lines to get a PS5. It's it's probably e probably easier to get the PS5 than a fucking Nvidia card actually, um, especially the base models. Yeah, the base models are uh, absolutely experiencing issues. Given how bad it's been reported, it's like they didn't even fire up the code on original consoles. And it says uh, for the second question is with regard to not showing the console version. So this is we talked about this earlier. Um, we've actually shown console f uh, footage, but never on last gen consoles. So this is this is that separation that people. They have an expectation that's set because they see running on console. This is console footage, console footage, and they just make the connection when they should. They should think logically. It's probably next gen consoles that they're showing, not like it's probably PS5, not PS4 base. So the reason is uh, that we were updating the game on last gen consoles until the very last minute. And we thought we'd take, we'd make it in time. Unfortunately, this resulted in giving it to reviewers just one day before the release, which was definitely too late, and the media didn't get the chance to review it properly. That was not intended. We were just fixing the game until the very last moment. Now, there's different ways to spin this, right? We saw what happened. We saw that the game was shipped for review uh, the day before. And to us, it felt like they were hiding something. Right, it felt like they were hiding something. Uh, they're saying that they were working on issues up until the last second. And they didn't get the game done until one day before release, and so that's why they got it so late. So you can look at this however you want. It really kind of depends on what your view of CDPR is. Um, and it says uh, it's, 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 before Christmas we released some sales numbers, uh, but in terms of refunds, we're not sure if we'll share this information outside of the company. So keep that in mind. We're gonna get some sales numbers next week. And uh, people thinking logically, we're getting some sales numbers next week, and that's when. Uh, but you, you're gonna have to like consider there's probably some refunds. And honestly, I don't think there's gonna be a ton of refunds. I think that again, I think that the that games media is gonna take this and run for it because this is a great story. <laughs> this is gonna get a lot of clicks. I mean, look what we're doing right now. <laughs> All right, we're talking about it. But it's it's something to run with. It's something to run with for sure. So. But I don't necessarily mean that. Don't necessarily need think that will translate into a shitload of actual actual refunds. Um, going down a little further here, and he says uh, what we did was instead uh, was promised that every single gamer who bought the game on last gen consoles would get a proper next gen update next year. And I just talked about this. So if you bought the game. Then uh, on uh, PS4 base, and you plan on getting a PS5 uh, or a PS4 Pro, whatever, right? If you, you if you don't have a PS5 and you bought you bought the version of the game, it'll work with PS5 and they'll update it, uh, and then you'll be fine. Uh, and then here we go. The pre-order numbers were split between PCs and consoles, with PC accounting for 59% of sales. Uh, consoles are 41%. So this is um, this is I mean, this is a interesting numbers to see. Personally, we always guesstimate like, well, wonder how they sold here and there. We wait for like the game, the game stop numbers, right? Uh, but this is a really interesting split. He says, uh, unfortunately, we don't have exact split between old and new console versions. But the reason why is because use the same SKU, so they don't they don't know. Now, 
Could they dig that information up? I feel like they should be able to. Like, there's device IDs for people that are playing. The same way that Steam has device IDs and all that. So they do the report at the end of the year and they say, this is how many of this kind of PC, this kind of resolution, this kind of graphics card, this kind of whatever. Uh, I feel like they could probably pull those numbers up. So I don't know how accurate this is. Maybe they're saying... Yeah, we don't have that number right now because we have to get that raw data in and then we have to compare it to data we get from the platforms, if that makes sense. So they're going to need a report from Sony and then they're going to compare the data and they'll be able to see how many people are actually playing on each platform. Um, but pretty well, Mike says, even when running well, there's always some weird shit happening somewhere in view. It just pulls you out of the experience. Yep. Yeah. Uh, was there even was there uh, even a different build for each gen console? Well, clearly, yeah, because they said they couldn't get the damn thing out until the day before <laughs> for last gen consoles. So yeah, there's definitely a different build, but it's still the same skew. So I guess it still registers as the same game internally. Uh, I don't know how they're running that you know in the game. Maybe it's just a check the software does. It says. If platform equals blank, then don't upgrade, right? Like, but if platform equals PS5, then download massive upgrade to bring it up to speed. Um, look at the hardware data from the crash dumps sent back from consoles. That's your uh, number of last chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen so even in the Digital Foundry video that was released uh, like over a week ago, actually. It wasn't like it was just released. That was over a week ago. Um, even in their video, probably around like the 17 minute mark or so, like towards the end, three quarters of the way through, uh, they show that there is just lots of crashing, lots of crashing. Uh, it says, naturally, we would be expecting PC to have a bigger share in the pre-order campaign as PC gamers are usually more active on the pre-order front. I highlighted this. I highlighted this because I feel like we're constantly talking about don't pre-order, don't pre-order, don't pre-order. <laughs> and we and who do we blame for pre-orders? We usually blame consolers. Those fucking console, man, those fucking console guys. Stop pre-ordering stuff, console guy. They're going to GameStop and they're pre-ordering. They're getting suckered in. Nope. <laughs> it was us. It was us the whole time. <laughs> Stop pre-ordering! We're the ones doing all the shit. Uh, <laughs> so from what I've heard, it's the same build, just uh, backwards compatibility at the moment. Yep. TB always told us not to pre-order. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I I, I pre-order games sometimes, um, but uh, I try I try not to. I try not to if I can, if I can avoid it. But uh, I thought, yeah, I thought we were better than this. I know that's what I felt like when I saw this. I was like, oh damn it, it's us. <laughs> Ah, oh, so that entire uh, this entire transcript here is going to be available in the uh, in the in the notes. But I'll go and drop it in here for chat right now, so you guys can go through and uh, view it if you want. The, I mean, lots of really good questions. You're, it's the CFO, uh, the CFO, the joint CEO, and the co-founder are the ones who are answering the questions. So these are these are your C level people that are going through and answering these questions, and they're going to give whatever answers that they um, well, obviously that will uh, uh, will uh, please the shareholders and also please the. Uh, uh, the the players because they know this shit's gonna get out to everyone. Uh, no, everyone pre-order then refund our release and then buy it again. <laughs> Just stack all the numbers. Use your pre-order indie game. Oh yeah, well indie games. I, I, it should be implied that um, that when we're talking about don't pre-order stuff, like usually we're talking about uh, AAA games. But yeah, it's us, man. We're the bad guys. <laughs> we're the bad guys. Oh man. See, you only pre-order WoW expansions because I know they are going to be a letdown, but I'll buy it anyways. Early access is a type of pre-order. It's true. It's true. It's true. Absolutely. So. <sighs> Listen up, virgins. Get out of your symptoms now. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. Get out of your systems now. Because soon you will not be able to say certain words on the platform. All right. Twitch banned simps. Simp. <laughs> not the simps. The simps are still here. We just got to come up with a better name for them. Uh, <laughs> uh, so my fellow symptoms. I know. <laughs> it was a slip, man. It was a slip. Uh, now. Yes, uh, they have come out and they said that they are banning on the platform the usage of the words uh, simp, um, virgin, and incels. Now, uh, Prime Boys, Prime Boys should make a comeback. That was that was my word. 
Prime Boys should make a comeback. I really like that one. I thought it was good. Prime Boys. Uh, but uh, what about the word simple? <sighs> no. Can't. You can't. You, if you have a cooking stream, no more extra virgin olive oil. If you're from Virginia, can't talk about it. <laughs> but no. They, they, they are saying that context matters here. <sighs> I'd be lying if I said that Twitch didn't have a history of kind of flip-flopping on what context actually matters, right? Or when or if context actually matters. Exactly. See, chat knows. Um, yeah, they, they certainly have a history of some iffy decisions based off how they enforce certain rules. Uh, I know that somebody named, um, some, someone Minx, she got banned for using... Uh, Profane language. She said that she did use the word simp, the word virgin, the word incel, one of those words. Uh, but I wouldn't, I would be careful because people are going to get banned and they're going to say that they use these words, but they didn't use them, whatever. Uh, and you're going to have to wait until, like, you can't just take everything for face value. Uh, and I say that about Justin Minx specifically because initially I was like, what the fuck? She just said it and she was banned? What? But then there was a deleted tweet where she highlighted the part where she, in her ban it says for using profane language and she says, Twitch, you're a bunch of cunts. And it's like, all right, if your response to getting banned for using profane language is to direct more profane language towards, <laughs> towards the platform, probably means you're somebody who maybe is an aggressive user of certain certain words you know what i'm saying so there's there's going to be people who are going to get banned uh who were using the word but they'll still try to play it down a little bit they'll try to play it down a little bit uh are they going to personally check for context i doubt a automated system can do that i don't think the AI automated system is going to be going through and reviewing the um the audio of the VODs. I don't think they're listening to what I'm saying right now. So if I say simp, virgin, or, or incel, I don't think it's going to hear that and say, whoop, whoop, whoop. I think they're going to look for uh, people reporting stuff, people who are, um, uh, maybe they're going to look at chat. So thank you guys for flooding us with this. So we're going to get a review probably. Uh, but no, this is the news. We got to talk about it, man. Um, yelling at the mods never works. They drop more F bombs. The, the, this. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? Uh, the word simp actually doubled in usage. Look at this. Chats mentioning simp doubled after Twitch ban. On December 16th, simp chats were 97% higher than the previous 15-day average. <laughs> Streisand effects. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, this is what happens. And you know what's funny? By the time... By the time they actually implement this and they make it official that it's going to be part of their their terms of use or their whatever they're calling it, uh, by the time they do this, no one's going to want to use the word. We're going to play it out. <laughs> We're gonna. That's what happened. Like Twitch is really feeling like like fucking dad right now. You know, it's like you don't do blank, and so you get it all out of your system, and you're like, well, I don't fucking do that anyways. It's like. <laughs> Don't do blank. And it's like, well, I'm, I don't fucking want to do it anyways, dad. Whatever. <laughs> like, kids move on. And that's what's happened with Twitch. It's not... They're banning a fucking word. When instead they should be enforcing harassment policies. That's what they should be doing. Don't ban the word. That's not going to solve any problems. We're just going to come up with new words. That's what we do. There's new words all the fucking time. <laughs> that are being repurposed or created. And then, what are they going to do? Add it to the list? No, they need to enforce their harassment guidelines. Don't do this shit. All you're going to do is make people say it a million fucking times or 140,000 times until they get tired of it. And then they come up with a new word. Ridiculous. Just force the rules. They've claimed they've been there for years. Just that. So far, we had a golden uh, glitch con and the, and the uh, Simpocalypse, uh, but nothing for DMCA. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. I have a note here to explain what a simp is. You know what? How about this? How about this? <laughs> it autofills. Urban Dictionary. Simp, WAP, Cap, Pog, Karen, Stan. 
<laughs> Urban Dictionary. I'll just read this out. It's a little easier. So it says, someone who does way too much for the person they like. That's probably not a very good uh, a description, at least not fitting to uh, um, to what we do. Let me see. Uh, he's a guy who does for women. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> a word that everyone overuses without the correct definition. It means a guy that is overly desperate for women, especially if she is a bad person, or has expressed her disinterest in him, who, uh, whom which he continues to obsess over. They're usually just virgins that will accept coochie for anyone, regardless of who they are. Oh my god. Alright, so, listen. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Urban Dictionary's a rabble. Oh, uh, fuck it. Hey, oh, get a sip mug for your Facebook friend, Rihanna. What? Rihanna's my Facebook friend? Holy shit. <laughs> Y'all didn't know, huh? Y'all didn't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a simp is, in, in, in our world, uh, basically, any, any male that says anything positive or gives any amount of donation or anything to a female streamer you're a simp like it's the bar is pretty low bar is pretty low you can just go in and just say anything and depending on the size of the community right like the smaller communities like yeah you know, you know, hey, what's up, man? What's up? Join us, whatever. Uh, but then you, when you talk about the larger communities, we the, the larger the community, the, the larger the amount of text toxicity. Um, that's where you're going to get people that are just like going to call out anything you do for for a female streamer, a simp. Uh, thirsty is a little more accurate. Thirsty is a good one. Yeah, thirsty is a little good. Yeah, I mean, it, it, traditionally you would you would assume that somebody who is uh, 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 like really trying, like I gave you a hundred dollars. Uh, why won't you send me your address or something? Or why won't you respond to my DMs kind of thing? That's definitely a simp. That's like a definition simp. Uh, you just found out what a simp was and got banned. God, I know. Late to the party. What do they call the reverse of that, though? I don't know. Someone just doesn't say a lurker. A lurker. There you go. Simps and lurkers. So, yes, they're banning. They're banning words. Which I strongly believe is the wrong approach. They have a harassment policy. And it's flexible enough that they should be able to use it to address, you know, this issue with all these fucking virgins on this fucking platform. <laughs> they could address this using their existing policies. R slash nice guys. Yeah, that's the thing, man. We're going to just we're just come up with new, new fucking words. New words. If you get offended because someone called you a simp or a virgin, then you have other problems. You're probably an incel. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, a female that's thirsty towards a male? Oh, I mean, I think they can still call him a simp. You can still call him a simp. But predominantly is usually uh, males. Um, so if you're a guy, you're nice to a girl, and the way you're a simp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got nice, if you're nice to a girl. I mean, that's, I mean, that's what, it depends on the community, you know, it depends on the community. Not sure Twitch is that kind of platform. It's not like you just said you, they could address the, the virgin problem. <laughs> can't wait for that. Some, some, some virgins like, well, I can be that, be that way, but uh, can't wait for the remake of the good, the bad, and the, and the ugly. There are two good people in this word. Sims and lurkers. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a, uh, I, this policy is going to go in. And what's going to happen, like I said, people are going to come up with new words and that's going to be the end of it. You know, they're going to come up with new words and we're not going to hear about it again until they decide to update their harassment policy. And that's going to just basically be a broader thing. They're going to come out and going to say, <laughs> like, we didn't really expect them to come up with new words, <laughs> but they did. Clever bastards. So we're going to go ahead and open up the policy a little bit more and just any word that whatever and it's just like dude it's already in there on harassment dog come on uh but what if but if twitch didn't create super positive like this streamers might actually have to enforce their own channel rules rather than blaming twitch mm. uh remember when twitch banned simps mm-hmm <laughs> uh, i just want to learn new words so i can not be offended <laughs> yeah yeah well just be careful what you say. Because, because, just be careful. When new words come out, just be careful. Don't get too comfortable with them because they might eventually be banned. They might eventually be banned. Stop being desperate, thirsty, white knight. Yeah, white knight. 
White Knight. Yeah, that's kind of a simp, right? It's like a simp with money. Is I'm too old for new words? <sighs> you're not too old for new words. You're not too old. You're on the internet. You get exposed. You get them. A lot of YouTubers said this is being done uh, to cover their uh, to cover their thoughts. Oh, so you're saying that uh, that this? Yeah, like somebody else said, it's like it, Twitch is stepping in so that way people don't have to moderate their own communities, right? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It feels very Puritan. It feels very uh, backwards. It doesn't really feel like the way that we should that they should be uh, managing this this problem. But uh, yeah, so I had to use the word "bruh" for six years. I know, and then Declan happened. Jesus, <laughs> and I start saying all the time because of him now. All the time, I say it all the time, bruh. Uh, I also mentioned that this will be case by case according to Twitch. Yes, yeah, they said it's gonna be case by case. They said it's going to be. I actually have a, I actually have a comment here. Um, let me see. So it says, we will take action against the use of terms like simp, incel, or virgin, specifically when they are being used to negatively refer to another person's sexual practices. Uh, using these terms on their own wouldn't lead to an enforcement, uh, but we would take action if they are used repeatedly in a harassing manner. You guys don't feel harassed, right? Let's get that out of the way. Don't fuck me on this. Don't fuck me on this. All right? Don't fuck me on this. It says, we deny emotes related to these terms and take them down because they are reported to us. We have a stricter policy on emotes overall because they can be used across Twitch. So we take the more proactive measures to minimize the potential for harm. We knew that. We knew that already. We knew that already. Um, <clears throat> I do. God, fierce peace. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I feel harassed. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm being harassed. <laughs> Pull out your card. <laughs> uh, if we fucked you with this, we wouldn't be virgins anymore. Ah, see. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we said we had to change. We had to change shrimp paycheck's name. He had simp paycheck in discord. And we had to change it to replace the simp with a bunch of asterisks. Yep. Yep. How about be I'm being offended? Oh, man. What kind of nut job gets offended over the stupidity? You know, there, there's, there's a scale of toxicity that exists uh, in certain chats that, um, that will show you that these words can be a problem because they're used, because they're they're used in a way that, like they said, is, uh, is a way to disparage or discredit or whatever somebody who's trying to support the streamer. Um, so imagine, imagine if you're a streamer and um somebody comes in and they're like you know you know it's almost christmas here's 100 bucks uh and then they just feel yeah it's 100 bucks here you go and then 20,000 other viewers are like oh this fucking simp and they make you feel bad for doing it right they make the person feel bad for doing it it's like man i was just trying to i was just trying to hook them up for for christmas um and then be the streamer and it's like, well, now there's missed potential income because nobody wants to even contribute the smallest amount because they're going to get called out for being a simp or being a virgin or being an insult or whatever or whatever. And so in that regard, it makes sense. But also in those communities, there's supposed to be a team of moderators to help manage that. Uh, and apparently it's not. Do we have the ability to ban words in our own in our own channel? I mean, I feel like that'd be a great one. Like, add words to auto mod that we can. I feel like that probably exists, but we don't really have modding issues here. Somehow, yes, you think so? Okay, cool. Yeah, we don't really have modding issues he here, so I don't really worry about that. So, in those cases, it's like, why don't why doesn't the streamer like ban the words themselves? Like, put it upon the streamers. It's like, hey, you know, maybe just ban these words, and then if somebody tries to get around the filter, then time them out. Just time them out. That's why I donate to Mike, but he's a sexy beast. That's right. That's right. Uh, you get anywhere to your mod list. Perfect. Mike's a, Mike's a smelly head. Bam me nerds. Oh, God. There will only be new words invented. Exactly. Speaking of people act as sus. Among Us is coming to Xbox Game Pass. Uh, playable on Xbox. Also, we released last week on Switch. And on top of that, if you're playing on Switch, you can get access to the airship map by following these simple steps. It's actually pretty easy. 
So, if you're interested in playing the new map, uh, it's on Game Pass now. There you go. Uh, and you could probably try that. You could probably get in there and try the new map if you like. I'm, I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for it to come to PC. It should be here soon. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, six out of ten. You tried at least. I tried. I tried. I tried. Is it now cross platform? So, I, so what I've read is that the Switch version is cross platform. So, tell somebody says I'm wrong. But yes, I believe it is. That type of session would be very frustrating. So I think the way that they, they're they doing it uh, on Switch is you use the companion app. Uh, if you didn't know, there's a companion app that you can sync your uh, Nintendo Online experience uh, with whatever you're playing on your Switch. And then you can use it. Predominantly, people would use it for, um, for Animal Crossing to be able to talk and do all that stuff. It's easier to use. I, I don't know if, if you can use a touchscreen for, uh, for typing. There, I mean, there's an on-screen keyboard. But still, a bit of a nightmare. I think in general, using uh, using uh, typing to play Among Us is um, the worst. <laughs> I know Ira has logged, and Demi have probably logged millions of hours in playing it that way. Uh, and uh, their their ever present salt <laughs> is a reflection of that. <laughs> so, so yes, I know the phone was a uh, cross, but platform was usually snobs about that. Switch doesn't have a mic. No, the Switch does not have a mic. The Switch internally, the Switch does not have voice uh, support. Um, I think I heard the Switch version accidentally had too much content released, and now they were working on removing it again. Oh, more than merrier! Yakuza Remaster Collection and Yakuza Six were announced for Xbox last week. Nice, there you go. A little bonus news at the end there. So, yep. Uh, it'd be dead on YT if not for proxy chat mods. The videos do super well. Yeah, proxy chat is something I haven't tried yet. I'm gonna try that. Um, but that's the news. Thank you so much, chat. Pre Christmas news, chat. Thank you so much. I hope you and obviously everybody on YouTube that are watching who definitely picked Chronicles of Riddick over Pitch Black. Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas. Uh, I will be here streaming next week. I'm sure some of you guys will be here as well. Probably skip Christmas, though. Um, <clears throat> and that's right. Everybody say goodbye to YouTube. Chronicles of Riddick is the best. And if you don't think so, then you're a virgin. Virgin.